stability, strength, and vigor. These are the hallmarks of the bulldog. Although once bred for his fighting spirit, today's bulldog is a devoted companion, prized for his great heart and constant friendship. The bulldog is thought to have been developed centuries ago from the ancient fighting dogs of Roman Europe and Britain. References can be found from as early as the 13th century to courageous, fearless animals used for bear and bull baiting, which grew to become popular sporting pastimes by the 18th century. With the outlawing of such vicious sports in the 19th century, the bulldog languished as a breed and, indeed, nearly became extinct. But a widening group of determined breeders set about to eliminate the undesirable traits left from former times, while preserving the courage and stability of these ancient fighters. By the late 19th century, their efforts produced a dog universally admired for its loyalty and unique appearance. The Bulldog was one of the first breeds recognized by the AKC, being admitted to registration in 1886. You'll be seeing many Bulldogs during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the Bulldog. In general appearance, the bulldog is of medium size with a smooth coat. He has a heavy, thick-set, low-swung body and a massive, short-faced head. His carriage should suggest stability, vigor, and strength, and his demeanor should be pacific and dignified. The bulldog is never vicious or aggressive. The standard contains no height requirement for either sex. Dogs, however, should weigh about 50 pounds, while bitches should be about 40 pounds. The male dog typically exhibits the characteristics of the breed to a greater degree than the bitch. Due allowance should be given to bitches when just... Either sex, however, all parts should be well distributed and bear good relation to one another so that the animal does not appear deformed or ill-proportioned. This dog and bitch are examples of good proportion and symmetry. Let's begin our detailed examination of the bulldog with the distinctive head. It is very large, large enough so that its circumference, measured in front of the ears, should measure at least the height of the dog at the shoulders. From the side, you can see that the head is very high, from the point of jaw to the highest point of the skull, while being very short from the point of the nose to the occiput. This correct forehead is flat, neither too prominent nor overhanging the rest of the face. Observe the proper layback following a line from tip of jaw to occiput. A straight edge placed from the tip of the lower jaw to the top of the head should just rest on the nose. The nose is tipped back and set deeply between the eyes. From the front, you can observe how high the head is from the corner of the lower jaw to the top of the skull. It is very broad and square. The cheeks are well-rounded, protruding sideways and outward beyond the eyes. The stop takes the form of a deep indentation or groove between the eyes. This is formed by the temples, which are very well-defined, broad, square, and high. The furrow indentation is broad, deep, and extends up the middle of the forehead all the way to the top of the skull, dividing the head vertically. 
as this is an up-faced head, see how the nose is on the same level as a line connecting the eyes. What about this head? It lacks sufficient layback, with the face being too vertical. Remember, the head should show good layback from tip of jaw to occiput. Also, the wrinkling is excessive. This head appears dish-faced. The nose does not reach the line from tip of jaw to occiput. Here, the nose does not tip back properly. And this head is down-faced. The nose is placed below a line connecting the eyes. The muzzle lacks sufficient width. Note that the nostrils are very narrow, which is more likely to cause breathing difficulties. This head is correct. It is broad and square. The forehead is flat, not rounded or domed. And the skull is very high compared to the foreface which is extremely short as measured from the front of the cheekbone to the tip of the nose. The muzzle is very short, turned upward, and very deep from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. The distance from the stop to the tip of the nose does not exceed the distance from the tip of the nose to the edge of the underlip. The nose itself is large, broad, and black with the tip being set back deeply between the eyes. The nostrils are wide and large to facilitate air passage. They are black with a well-defined line between them. A lighter colored nose, a flesh colored nose, or a mottled butterfly nose is objectionable. A brown or liver colored nose is a disqualification. The bulldog's chops or flues should be thick, broad, and pendant. They are very deep so that they completely overhang the lower jaw at each side. They join the underlip in front, almost covering the teeth, or, in some animals, cover the teeth completely. The teeth should be scarcely visible when the mouth is closed. The jaws are massive, very broad and square. The lower jaw is undershot, projecting considerably in front of the upper jaw and sweeping up with a definite turn-up. The teeth are large and strong, like these, with the canines wide apart and the six smaller teeth between the canines in an even, level row. This jaw is excessively wry and should be penalized. The bulldog's eyes are set low down in the skull, as far from the ears as possible. Their corners are in a straight line, at right angles to the stop. They're wide set, as wide as possible, while still allowing the outer corners to remain within the outline of the cheeks. They're round in shape and of moderate size, neither sunken nor bulging. They are very dark in color, with the lids covering the white of the eyeball when the dog looks straight ahead. There is no haw. These eyes are too sunken with haw showing. The facial wrinkling is excessive. These eyes are lighter than desired. These eyes are correct, of moderate size, round and dark in color. This dog's ears are also correct. They're set high on the head, with the front inner edge joining the outline of the skull at its back corner. They should be as wide apart and as far from the eyes as possible. They are small and thin, with this rose ear being the most desirable shape. The bulldog's ears should never be carried erect and should not be prick-eared or buttoned. They are never cropped. These ears are carried too high and are too large. These flat ears are also objectionable. 
The bulldog's skin is characteristically soft and loose, especially at the head, neck, and shoulders. The head and face are covered with heavy wrinkles, though not coarse or ropey. At the throat, there should be two loose, pendulous folds which form the dewlap. The neck is short, very thick, deep, and strong. It is well arched at the back and smoothly joins the shoulders. The shoulders are muscular and very heavy. From the front, the shoulders are widespread and slant outward, giving the bulldog great stability and power. The chest should be very broad, deep, and full. The chest is well let down between the shoulders and forelegs, producing the typical broad, low, short-legged bulldog look. The elbows are low and stand out away from the body. They follow the line of the shoulder and upper arm. The forelegs are short, very stout, straight, and muscular. They're set wide apart and form a bowed outline. This does not imply, however, that the bones of the forelegs are curved or bandy. The bowed appearance is created by the muscling of the legs, not by the bone structure of the legs themselves. The front feet are moderate in size, compact, and firmly set. The toes are compact, well split up, and have high knuckles and short, stubby nails. The front feet may point straight ahead or may turn out slightly. Both are acceptable. This front lacks sufficient width and depth. This east-west front is not desirable. These splayed feet are faulty as well. Here again is a representative front, deep, broad, and full, displaying the typical bulldog look. The bulldog's body is capacious with well-rounded ribs and great depth from shoulders to brisket. The back is very broad at the shoulders and relatively narrow at the loins. It is short and strong. Another of the breed's distinctive features is the so-called wheelback. This means that the top line dips behind the shoulders, rises to the loins, then dips again to the tail. See how the loins are higher than the shoulders. This is a desirable breed trait. The underline has a good tuck-up. What about this dog's body? It lacks the desired top line as it is straight and flat. This is not correct for the bulldog. Here the top line arch is not over the loins. It is too far forward, giving a camel-backed appearance. Here is another but more subtle example of the roach being too far forward, but not to the extreme of the previous example. This dog lacks tuck-up of the underline. Here's the proper top line for a bulldog, with the loins higher than the shoulders. Note again the good, capacious, round ribbing and deep brisket. The tail may be either straight or may be a screw tail. In either case, it must be short, set on low, with a decided downward carriage. It has a thick root and a fine tip. This screw tail has well-defined kinks, which may be so well-defined as to appear almost knotty. No portion of the tail, however, should be elevated above the root. The hindquarters are strong and muscular, with the hind legs longer than the forelegs. The hocks are slightly bent and well let down, so there is good length from loins to hock. This hindquarter lacks angulation, which is incorrect. From the rear, you can see that the lower leg is short, straight, and strong. 
the stifles are turned slightly outward, while the hocks turn in slightly. This in turn causes the hind feet to turn out, which is correct. Hind feet, like the front feet, are moderate in size, compact, and firmly set. The toes are compact, well split up, and have high knuckles and short nails. The bulldog's coat is straight, short, flat, and close. It is of fine texture and should be smooth and glossy. There is never any fringe, feather, or curl. Coat color appears in several varieties, with red brindle being the most preferred, followed by all other brindle varieties. Fine, equal, and even distribution of the brindling is ideal. Solid white bulldogs come next in preference after the brindles. Then solid red, fawn, or fallow coats. piebalds, and finally various combinations of all these coat colors. Solid black is very undesirable, but not so objectionable if occurring to a moderate degree in piebald patches. In all cases, the color of the coat should be uniform, pure, and brilliant. Rarely would color be the deciding factor in judging, as conformation always takes precedence. Like so much else about the bulldog, the breed's gait is unique. It is a loose-jointed, shuffling, sideways motion, producing the characteristic roll. Nonetheless, the gait should be unrestrained, free, and vigorous. Coming at you or going away, there should never be an impression of restricted, inefficient, or tiring movement. This fiddle front is faulty. Here the rear legs are traveling too far off their axes. This scissoring action is unsound. The bulldog's conformation may be distinctly different than that of other breeds. However, he should still exhibit sound, unrestrained, and vigorous movement. Finally, a word about temperament. Despite the bulldog's sordid past as a fighter, today's animal has one of the most even-tempered and kind dispositions of any purebred dog. He is never aggressive, preferring to observe the world with calm dignity and quiet resolution. From near extinction, the bulldog has become one of man's most gentle, affectionate, and loyal friends.